be great. <gasps> We're broadcasting live to all attendees. They're coming in. I see the numbers racking up. Where do you see the numbers? Very exciting. Oh, okay. oh, you... Participants oh, at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Come yeah. on, Dana. Okay, so <laughs> oh, oh, very exciting. Here they come. Come on, people. Get in. They come. They're oh, coming. Owen's They're sliding in. Hi, Owen. Owen. Lovely Owen. You know Owen from, from the, the pod fam. <laughs> Of course I am. <laughs> we are just, we haven't officially started yet, everybody. We're waiting for everyone to come in. It's like a party. Everyone's got to come in, find their seat, take a tour of the room, and then we'll properly, <laughs> it's not just an hour of this, except it is. hungry. I'm hungry. Now Why you have you not got a snack? <sighs> I haven't got a snack. Oh, Text you. Go and get a snack. <laughs> Text you. <Great> snack. <laughs> snack. Hmm. Uh, Go on, digest. You've got I mean, it you. feels like a snack time. Yeah. Flapjack, digestive. Oh no. Jaffa cake. Oh no, vile. Wait, what? Oh. Rich tea? It's just, no, pointless. Yeah. Rich tea is a pointless biscuit. Faye I'm Myers is eating dins as we speak. Selfish I'm witch. <laughs> Uh, we found a new biscuit here, which apparently is a Spanish biscuit called the Patrick. It literally just says Patrick on the packaging and it's like a rich tea with a custard cream filling. Oh my so God. It's like I two my... rich teas. I, 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 if I could get them to you without them shattering, I will try, but it's a strong recommend because I'm not a rich tea person apart from once in a blue moon when you go, Oh, it's not as bad as I thought. But then the second one, you're like, anything, aren't they? like you have a rich tea and you're like, it's, like it's a bit claggy. No, see, I feel like it's me, a bit claggy. They're the thing that you can have multiples of and not feel too guilty about. Really? Yeah. I just we'll think it's this is not necessarily yeah. how the fuck. <laughs> <I've done laughs> watch that. Books and Beauty with Caroline Hirons and Lindsay Kelk. And for anyone who doesn't know, and of course you all do, but let's just talk about the fact that we have Lindsay Kelk, the author of sixteen published books. One of them is on the shelf. We're going to talk about that. How you're saying, I do not know. Well, you know I'm not, so that is oh. a fair assessment. I feel so sad that the uh, expression you caught on my face just then when Caroline said, how you're saying, and I went. <laughs> um, but author right. of 16 books, host of and contributor to two podcasts, and goodness knows what else, the brilliant, wonderful Lindsay Kelp, who is live from Los Angeles and live from London. We have the most powerful woman in beauty, Caroline Hyrens, do not get in this seat. Stay in this chat because we are all about the books and beauty. And let's not forget, Lindsay may have written 16 books. Caroline has just published, very recently in fact, one, skincare. And, and is only ever going to publish one. And let's just say, well, well when you that. ace it, Caroline, you've only got to do it once. Mine's, oh, mine's in the other room, my color coded bookshelf, making the yellow section look very, very good. But Caroline's book, Skincare, is to the literary world what the what uh, Avengers Endgame was to movies in 2019, <laughs> in that it broke all records and is basically the biggest thing to have ever happened to words and pages. Okay, then. That's, that is literally the industry buzz that I've Biggest heard thing to ever happen to words and pages. To words and to words pages, and specifically. Uh, there was one cookbook that was a more important thing to happen to spines, but words and pages, it's Caroline. It's Caroline. <laughs> so, goodness, thank it's you. It's amazing. So uh, perfect description. And PodFam, lots of PodFam people in the house. I'm guessing lots of listeners of Full Coverage, which is obviously Lindsay's podcast. And many of you, of course, will have heard Caroline, not only on Lindsay's podcast, Full Coverage, which she co-hosts with makeup artist Harriet Hadfield, but also my podcast, The Emma Gunn Show which should be subscribed to immediately, or at least after. Immediately. Uh, you're such a professional. I'm so, every, I know you're such a professional because I've been on your podcast and I know that, oh, good work. But it, you're such a professional, it's so impressive. Everyone go and subscribe to Emma's podcast immediately because yep. she's dead good. Thank you, I've just to by the fact, thank you. I really like that, but is she eating a Twinkie? Jim left a croissant at the side of his bed, the fool. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, that might be the best and stupidest move ever because who doesn't want to wake up to find a croissant on the side of your bed um, well, he's diabetic, secondly, he? somebody so else is going to eat he's it he's diabetic so oh, he has to have he has he's got to have a snack look. please replace it it didn't need to be a chocolate croissant diabetic food. please replace it we don't want jim to wake up in the night and think oh, all right God, it would I'm wake me up to do it anyway so i wouldn't worry okay fine <laughs> as long as no harm will come to jim as a result of oh he's all right snack. 
Okay. You never come to bed without a snack, that man. Hello, Sorry, everyone, but I've had quite the day. Yes, yeah, so Caroline has um, a update. Yes. Um, do we want to do a top line of Caroline's day and then move oh, on? No, should, I think we should absolutely. Well, at least let's just mention Beauty Backed before we start, because okay. let's do that. You've okay. just launched it. It's amazing. Um, eat your croissant. Um, <laughs> he's wetting himself. He's just a laughing emoji like, oh my God, woman. He's like, you can't eat on a live. I'm like, well, apparently I can. Too late. It's been done. You absolutely can. Breaking down barriers. Breaking down barriers everywhere you go. It's classic Iris. Hmm. Um, yeah, Beauty Batch, until your mouth is empty, I'm going to talk about it for you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Um, beautyback.com go there now sign the petition donate to the gofundme if you can if you can't completely understand we're all in weird places uh but if you can share it that's that's as good yeah, yeah, share, to share, share it we want everyone to know about this tell us about it caroline tell us about it um long story short when boris announced that beauty was not going to open as he had promised um a typical loser's move to do it last thing on a Friday. Um, he basically said we, and he also didn't say beauty. He avoided us completely and said close contact services. Um, and I just messaged my business partner, Al, and said, and I quote, this is my WhatsApp message, Al, we need to do something for people in this industry who can't pay their bills. We need to start something, a foundation, anything. And that's kind of what we did. And that was Friday. Oh, Saturday morning at half ten. <laughs> so we didn't need a weekend. That's fine. Um, and then we kind of pulled it together. I bought the domain name. Um, I just did a quick WhatsApp group of people I know who are really just really sort of brilliant organisers, basically. Um, got the British Beauty Council on board, CW, Babtac, and then put it live, spoke to the, my accountant and lawyer about the legals and they said, well, if you've got a charity you can already donate to, that makes your life much easier. Thank God they said that. Then we found the hair and beauty charity, which I kind of knew of, but hadn't really experienced. So we spoke to them today and it was perfect. And they do amazing things. Like if you are someone who is in the industry and something happens to you and you have children, they will sponsor your children until they're 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, brilliant. So. We kind of, we launched it and we're currently on, I don't even know, what was the last total? The last total? Uh, was, you're on 29,000 pounds no. and uh, 3,500 signatures going up every second. 29,000 um, pounds. Yeah, and basically we, we just, and the great thing is we don't even have to touch the money and all of it, every penny of it goes to um, the hair and beauty charity and then people who need help can apply via the hair and beauty charity so they can just send in their info and where it normally takes 21 days for them to approve things um they're doing it on a they're doing it on a once a week basis just to make sure they can get the money through i'm really glad that we're chatting on a day like today when you've done something like this because i think when you title a webinar or whatever this chat is as books and beauty I mean, we're not going to just be chatting about our favourite lipstick formulas and the kind of moisturisers we love. And it's really, it's really brilliant. Uh, Lindsay... Nobody cares. Come on. <laughs> no, but I think sometimes uh, some people may not necessarily know quite how deep the roots for all of us go into the beauty industry. And especially you, Caroline, who really understands how it works, what the machinations are. You understand the policy, politics, and to be able to actually come out and say, right, Yes, I'm a content creator. Yes, I review products. Yes, I've written a best-selling book about beauty called Skincare, available now. I know. From all good bizarre, isn't it? Stores. I'm also actually helping people whose income has been jeopardised mm. by the unfair regulations that have been put in place by the UK government around the beauty industry. So let's just, what a brilliant thing that we can talk about this side of the beauty industry that is where all of our roots really spread to and i know lindsay you feel very passionately about this too yeah absolutely it's um i know obviously i'm best known for my books because that's probably why most people are here but as emma mentioned i have a beauty podcast and my i've always been a beauty lover but actually my it was my second job was beauty pr um so i've been in the beauty industry and beauty industry adjacent since I was 22 um, and when I left that job 
because my boss was a monster. That's a fun story for another time. Um, I we miss all have beauty. We've all been there. Oof, We've all been yeah, there. No, uh, you don't get to own that category. <laughs> I, oh no, I know, but I've, I've oh, I had the stories. Um, yeah, we, I missed it so much that I started my first beauty blog, uh, Beauty Mecca, and that was 2006. And um, is it 2000, it's 2006, end of 2006, very beginning of 2007. It's still online, which is dead weird. I found a picture of us when we first had a cup of tea in Marlebone at the weekend, weirdly Did enough. Did you find it? That's so funny. I, I just was hair. texting... I was, oh, I know, I was messaged in, um, with Ms. Guns the other day and I found it in my, my um, Google calendar sets up reminders and it was like tea with Caroline and it was six years ago and I couldn't believe it. it was six, six years, years ago? ago. Wow. Yeah, it has to be because I was in uh, New York um, and my hair was red. Yeah, you were. So, yeah. God. Yeah. Um, so it's weird, I think, because full coverage has only been around sort of three years um, and my blog was never my name. It was sort of not anonymous because everyone. Your hmm? award winning podcast has only been around for three years. My award winning podcast for coverage <laughs> um, is three years. But yeah, I, I, industry wise, I knew people and they knew who I was. But outwardly facing, it was anonymous. I didn't use my name because I was still working a full time job and my boss was a bit weird about it because it was 2006, six seven when blogs weren't really a thing. So I kept it anonymous. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been in it a long time and known a lot of people for a long time. So to see what's going on now is just like, it's just the fury, the fury and the rage. And I'm already full of fury and rage all the time. So this hasn't helped anybody. Uh, apart from people that it will now help. This brings us on to a great question. How many times have you listened to Killing in the Name Off by Rage Against the Machine in the last week, Caroline? <laughs> At least once a day. More so since lockdown than this last week more so since lockdown um and the live versions and the finsbury park version which is my favorite ever okay right well do you know what i'm gonna do we know where I we can see it today. i was like that man i'm getting some sugar in my system now i'll be rocking in a minute honestly Zach you Rocha allegedly works out at my gym but i've never seen him there oh. but he does allegedly work out there very handsome young man no, I know. And he, apparently he comes in very early. And my friend at the gym was always like, oh, you know, he comes here, right? And I'm like, we're going to need a text message system in which you let me know. Also, weirdly, one of the first penises I ever saw, because there was a photo of them in Select magazine where they were completely naked. And I was like 14 and was like, how do I not know this picture exists? Stop it's in Select. It's in an ancient yeah. issue of Select. Sorry, everybody. I've lowered the I tone. used to do that, though, because uh, I remember in the early, in the mid 80s, the NME published a picture of Michael Hutchins on his back like this and the sheet I mean you could see the top of the peen the sheet was like pube and peen you know when the you're root. like and the, I, root of the, the root peen. the root veg was on show <laughs> and I honestly I would have been like maybe and I was yeah. just like so when people always wind me up and they're like oh my god what if um what if um you know, you ever saw Simon Le Bon, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, Simon Le Bon is like my heart, dude. Michael Hutchins was a certain woman's sexual awakening. I'm sorry. Come on. Yeah. And yeah. Even, no, yeah. I was on the bus yeah. going not to just, school. And not just right. women. Caroline <laughs> and I went to the same in excess concert. Not when we didn't know each other. Oh, man. I'm so jealous. I used, we had, uh, Kick was just on in my house when I was growing up on rotation. Just on rotation. Because I'm the age of your mother. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's been lovely. Goodbye. <laughs> No, you are, I am younger than you, but marginally so, marginally so. Shut up, um, marginally so. I'm 40 in October. I have got to the point now where I'm like quite keen to get there because I feel like I'll be taken seriously as a grown up. I feel like I wanted to not be 40 forever and ever, but it feels like the same as 30 when I was like, oh, now I'm just like, when I'm 30, I'll have all the answers and be an adult and people take me seriously. Didn't happen. So now I'm like, maybe 40, maybe that's the one. They Probably do take not, seriously when you're a bit older. And you well, just well, you and you're like, I need this now. And they're like, oh, she sounds a bit hormonal. Okay, that's, let's just that's to That's true. Us. That's true. I've been acting like a 40 year old since I was 20, which is why I'm so hateful. But now, <laughs> like, oh, yeah, maybe I'll do it because she's got some experience and she might know what she's talking about. And she's not just a, a wet I also, full disclosure, I found the photo, but it had this one's been censored, but I will send it to you all. Not everyone watching. I'm not I sending you all the pictures. I need that in my WhatsApp room immediately. Rage Against the Machine. 
I but yeah, it's. Saw, um, I think it was Mo Wiggins saying there's no way I'm googling that. My search history is already quite. No, hard. don't do it on your work computer. It was Lollapalooza '93 for anyone who cares to uh, search it, and it yeah. was a protest. But as if it was '93, hey, they were I was probably protest 12. Naked. I'll show up to that protest. 12 year old Lindsay stealing her brother's select magazine was um, somewhat. Post like, it in the pod group, Linz, they're saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I can post the, uh, I will post the, the censored version if you care to find the uncensored. That's on you. <laughs> That's on you. I can't find it. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm sending it. Hey, have you found it? I'm gonna oh. Watch. oh, they're all censored. So, what I'm going to do. Uh, well, it was, it did exist without the censorship, but. I'm sure it. I'm sure it, someone's got it. Someone has got it. Battling the peens of rage against the machine to get your attention. But I'm so sorry, Emma. Okay, I'll put the phone down. I'm sorry. I won't look at any no, peens. No, it's fine. It's fine. But we know where we are today. We've just talked about beauty back. We've talked about Lindsay's 16 books that are out in the wild. We've talked about Caroline's skincare book. But why don't we go on a magical mystery tour or just let's reminisce? We've what? talked about Lindsay turning 40, but let's talk about our younger selves. Oh, God. Because actually, one of the questions Ooh. that's come in from our brilliant panel party of friends who are joining us in this live chat is what advice would you give your younger self? Now, who wants to go first? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it to Lindsay because she did find the peen picture first. Uh, um... Rage against the mapine. Um, I'm sorry, this is not <laughs> brilliant. Work Standing ovation chat. for Kelly Smith. <laughs> um, what advice would I give my younger self? Um, I would tell my younger self to stop worrying so much about what other people think, which oh, I yeah. still give to myself now. And also, uh, if it doesn't feel like it's enough, it's probably not enough and you shouldn't put up with it. Because I think for a very long time, I put up with a lot of really shoddy treatment. And no, it's not, pe that's not peen related, Emma. Don't laugh, but it could be. Um, but I, like I put up with a lot of shoddy treatment professionally and personally, because I thought that's what I deserved. And I know now that that's not true. Um, so I would say, don't put up with shit. <laughs> don't, don't put up with guff. There we go. I would fully concur. The way I've let some people treat me is like, pff, even now, if I see them, I want to throat punch them. People in the industry, you know, and you're like, no, I do. I, I get the look and people who know are like, oh God, move her away, move her away. Thank God she doesn't drink anymore. Um, but yeah, don't let yourself be treated in a way that, two ways, in a way that you wouldn't treat other people and in a way that you know you don't deserve to be treated. Don't let people disrespect you. Yeah. Okay. Curious Completely. though. How do you set those boundaries? Because when you're 25 and someone's treating you like shit, do you say, oi, dickhead? Or is there another strategy that's let, I mean, or is there another strategy? That's <laughs> Caroline, pretty much for me. Um, I just think the thing that, that I did that I shouldn't have done is I internalized it and what I should have done. And I was very junior in positions where I was being treated very badly by senior bosses. Um, so professionally, I, Think, I think you have to eat shit to a certain extent when you're starting out, but you need to deflect it and know it's not, not that eat shit as in like, let someone abuse you, never let someone abuse no, you, no, no, no. but you might have to do stuff that you don't want to do. And you might have to do stuff that's a bit shit. I think that's so, part whatever. of the course. That's of just part of it. Totally. Yeah. But I think if there is one person who is like, or there's someone that's causing you trouble and not everyone can walk out on a job. I couldn't walk out on the job that I was being abused at. Like I had to stay in it because I didn't have any money. I didn't have any support. I had to stay in that job. But what I could have done is not take it. So I, I wish I had been able to say to myself, this isn't about you, it's about them. And like the, the shit that they used to do, like I was a lot heavier and my boss put me on Atkins and would like monitor what I was eating. I'm gonna need that name and address when this is over. She was a beauty PR. Uh, we were in, we went to an event with clients and we had to put our names in the laser tag thing. We were at laser tag, obviously. Uh, and she put me down as the She Hulk, like shit like oh, that. Uh, and I just, uh, but instead of me saying, you're a bully and this is shit, I just believed it all and was like, she treats me like this because I deserve to be treated like this. Well, and well I know, I know this now, person, no one should. Possibly, she's been out of the industry for a while. But um, I don't I'm know. find out where this bitch lives. Yeah, it was just, and it was everyone in the team was treated the same, but it just created this horrible toxic environment. It was all women. Everyone was horrible to each other. 
I managed to come out of it with one of my best, best friends because we were both just clung to each other like life rafts and we're like, we will, we will get through this. And we did, and we both did. But um, I just think too many people like just get beaten out of that. Like I could have very easily, thankfully I moved into a second career that was my aspiration. But if I would have left PR because of that, I never would have gotten back in because I was so beaten down. Um, and I worry about how many people have given up on stuff because of just a shitty person and they took it in instead of pushing it back out. It's, it's really oh, hard. And the younger you are, the harder it is. But um, I, I would go back and say, Bonk. not having that, madam. Uh, you know what, I would have just punched her in the throat. <laughs> Sorry, she, she, she was a frisky one. Time. So I think she would have enjoyed a fight. Uh, but yeah, oof, oof, man. Can I take her though? Oh yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Oh, fantastic. All good. A lot of luster. Oh, that's fine. To be honest though, I find it, and this is also my rule with parenting, you don't have to hit your kids, you just have to get the right look. True. You know? We've both I done thought... retail, and I think you learn the look at retail. And my mum was that's retail kind of... as well, same as yours. And you get, um, I've tried to explain this to Jeff before, which is why kids don't like me, because I've got that lady look, because the parents, I worked at a toy shop, and my mum worked at a toy shop, and um, parents would bring their kids in, and they'd be like, if you don't put that down, that lady's going to tell you off. And I just have to stand there like. Oh, I wouldn't. I'd go. Yeah, And they I am. would just run. They would run. Yeah. And it's like, I, I've done nothing. <laughs> but you learn a lot from retail for silent you learn press. a lot from retail. Yeah. A lot for being in the service industry. True. Just that. retail for a long time. But I, love, I, I love retail, but I love what I love now is that I can leave. But I remember a few years ago uh, when freelance wasn't going so well and I was like, I, I can't get anyone to commission me to write words about beauty and I was being really pathetic. I remember my friend said to me, bitch, <laughs> if you can't make any money, if you can't pay your rent, you march down to that benefit counter and you go and be the best goddamn saleswoman that benefit have ever seen. Don't ever tell me that you can't make a living. I mean, obviously it's not that easy. It's not like benefit. Like, yeah, we've got <laughs> Uh, We've had quite a few of those conversations over the years, Em. I know. With me doing the... About, wor about working at the benefit counter? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Just about me being, you know, uh, encouraging. Encouraging. Yeah. That's you what were... everyone, that was the first thing I'd call you. <laughs> <laughs> In life, Caroline, she was encouraging. Motivational. I would, I would upgrade it to motivation. Motivational. Like, <laughs> what is wrong with you? What, have you got two legs? Right, move. I think what it comes down to is you, with anyone who you give a shit about, and you, um, you're very good in that you care about a lot of people, but the same fundamental thing runs through, which is it's all about making sure that person is living. What it comes down to is that person, you're saying to them, you deserve better, and this is how you're going to get it. I know you can't see it now because it's really scary and you've got lots of things on your mind, but I'm telling you that if you look at it this way, you'll get to where you need to be. And that's a really nice person to have in your contact book. And, and the odd bit of swearing. Really? Have a low touch. <laughs> it's the capitals. It's when I get the message in capitals. I'm like, no, I'm paying attention. Or Emma, the guns. The voice note terrifies me. Oh my God, what is it? <laughs> Why? <laughs> so that's good. So those, that's the advice to um, younger selves is to basically not take any shit. And to, oh God, I'm glad we decided not to swear during this particular we just We went over 30,000, we. You went <laughs> over 30,000. Just wanted to like, shout out you specifically Maybe. went over 30,000, which is amazing. Yay. This is a good question. Okay, so this is from the panel or the, the attendees, our party. And it's for all of us. Um, but let's start with Caroline this time. Okay. If you're stuck on a desert island, what book, podcast, and beauty item would make you feel better? You are under book. no obligation to say the Emma Gunn show, by the way. Book would be Bill Bryson's The Lost Continent, because it's just funny and it's about traveling. I could imagine I wasn't stuck on an island. Um, podcast, I couldn't possibly pick. I only really listened to about five, and you, you two are two of them. I don't have time. Yeah. You know, the minute, yeah. someone starts, the minute someone starts a podcast and they're so, like, chilled, you know what I'm like, ladies? I'm like, 
can we just cut to the chase? Come on. Probably to take myself away from Cagney and Lacey, probably Joe Rogan, because then I can just either rage or agree. So I'll be like, oh, I think about that. Or I'll be like, you idiot. Um, and what was the other one? Book, podcast. And beauty item. Oh. I, mean, I think we have to like, assume you already have SPF. I think yeah. we just assume we do Desert Island Discord, but you've already got SPF. Island, I ain't going to worry about an SPF, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I would probably take something like May Lindstrom's Blue Cocoon. I mean, it would melt. If I had a fridge, that would be helpful. But something oily, something lovely, you know. Great, Lindsay, what about you? Uh, book, podcast, and beauty item. Um... I'm gonna. I am gonna install Desert Island Disc Rules where we've already got the Emma Guns podcast, um, so we don't have to choose it because otherwise it's gonna sound really sickening. But it would be a lovely choice because you have so many interesting guests about interesting topics. Uh, I would feel like you were there with me, but then that might make me sad, and then I'd have to get a volleyball yeah, and draw I your face. I couldn't listen to a mate. I'd be upset. I'd have to listen to Joe Rogan because it'll be hard. Yeah. Him, um, I would choose Who Weekly, which is a podcast about the antics of Z list celebrities. Uh, what's it called who weekly who weekly um their tagline is everything you need to know about the celebrities you don't and every oh, week they do a special segment on what rita aura is up to she's the queen who uh and now they have a new <laughs> segment on ben affleck and anna de Armas and their relationship <laughs> Could you send me that because i can't find it and i don't want to be rude Thanks. I will. I'll send it to you. It's great. And I feel like that would be a good distraction on the desert island. And I would still know what Ben Affleck and Anna de Armas well, are up to. Well, we need to know. Uh, which would be important. Can I tell you a yeah. funny story that's a slight distraction, also slightly slanderous, Please so do. maybe Harper Collins will cut us off. But uh, <laughs> i just say that backstage at the Brits. I'm the co-host. Backstage okay. at the Brits. Uh, you know, we get a lot of the celebs. So you're there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and the celebs are there from Monday to Wednesday, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're going to love this. I just want to say there was a certain singer's family might sound like me to Cora noted mm -hmm. Who could it and be? people would come backstage <laughs> like try and blag freebies because Pixie were I was there with Pixie Pixie were really generous with the with the sort of goodies and stuff and so blah 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 and this same these same people have been coming in Monday Tuesday and Wednesday like oh can we and then on the Wednesday they came in and Amanda and I had, had it up to here right you know and you're just like there's always people trying to and they were so generous. There was no need. Like, they would try and pretend like they hadn't seen it before. Oh, can you tell me something about the product? And I'd be like, well, you were here the last two days. Like, what do you Two want people to I wouldn't want to try and take the mick out of Amanda. Hands. Well, wait for it, because honestly, it's one of my highlights of my life. So this girl goes, and I do, I'm not exaggerating. They all wear lanyards, right? So they've got, you know, the, the passes around the neck, like triple A, blah, blah, blah. And... She went, oh, hi, can I take some stuff for Rita, please? Well, she said, please. Rita. Rita. So, Rita. Rita. Cora. And I went. Yeah, Rita Cora. Rita Cora. And I went, oh, that's, do you know what that alarm is? That's my alarm telling me to take my HRT. <laughs> Sidebar. So, so I go, oh, no, we've put it in her room today. It should all be there. We gave her an, an artist's selection. And they went, right, okay, so do you have anything else? And we're like, well, not really, girls, because you've been in the last two days. You've kind of cleared us out. No word of a lie. This girl goes, and I am not joking, ladies and gents, shows her past and goes, hmm, same surname. At which Amanda, mans, at which Amanda says, and I shit you not. Oh, are you a shit singer too? And turned off. Oh! <laughs> At which point oh, I'm like that meter Cora <laughs> and Amanda, if you know Amanda, like don't don't get her angry. Don't get her angry. I mean Which she's like she's small, but she be mighty. And that the whole the rest of the whole rest of the day was us going, same surname. And the face, the face, same surname. Honestly. And we would go, oh. Are your family all shit singers too? And it would just be, it was like all day, all day. People in the, there are a few people in the chat saying who is Amanda. That Amanda is Amanda Bell, who works with Caroline at Pixie. What's her role at Pixie, Caroline? Oh, she's like the, I don't work for them, but she is their global head of education and artistry, I think. But I've known Amanda for over 20 years because we worked together at Space NK. 
that's it, sorry. Yes, obviously Caroline does not work for Pixie, just to cover myself legally. They do <laughs> but she is like... We're so far past no, to cover myself legally. But the thing with Amanda is, like, <laughs> if it was me, no, if it was me, I would just be, you know, oh, whereas Amanda doesn't even raise her voice. She just literally goes, oh, but you a shit singer too, and walked off, and I was just like... So you, is, though, if you're gonna more. have the brass neck to do that you've got to expect it you've got to be ready it didn't come back to be that. like no no because well, like what you've got no power what is it you What's think you're gonna with? achieve with let's do the yin and the yang the so two weird. nicest people at the brits yes that's loads good. but the two nicest on that particular event were professor green and stormzy oh gents, yeah. gents. Well, that's nice we like to hear that. Professor Green. We were like, yeah. we were like, would you like some stuff for your mum or your sisters? Or and Stormzy was like, oh yeah. Does anyone actually? If you just, you just so and, so, like, with, and he spent the whole time in the green room, not in the dressing room. He was in the green room and he rehearsed. You know his brilliant bit where he was like, did you think we'd forget about Grenville? I'm standing here at the end of the pixie counter, a sort of display thing. He rehearsed it here with his just with his AirPods in, singing into the curtain next to me. I'm like that. Oh my God, he's literally going to slag off Thatcher. Like he's literally going to go there. He's going to go there with Theresa May. Like, and then Professor Green called everyone his missus. He was like, oh, I've got to go see my missus, blah, blah, blah. And they were just like nice and polite. Like someone saying, I've worked with both of them. And they were genuine guys and really cared about all the security stuff and thanked us personally for helping. Yeah, Aww. very polite, said please and thank you. And then same surname, she can kiss my ass. <laughs> no time for me to Cora. Um, I don't okay. know if I could actually name any of her songs, which I feel quite weird about because she is on who weekly every week though they talk about her she's never on it she is never on it she, i mean i could point her out in a daily mail bikini lineup because that's something she's good at but i don't know any of the tunes right so just so that we don't go down a rita or a groove because moving on moving on, <laughs> Let's um, move on. I, i'm gonna answer the desert island question because it was for all three of us oh okay yes do it book so, so book Gosh, well, I said I'm going to answer. I didn't really think it through. It would probably be Tommy Lee's biography. Who? Tommy Lee's biography. Has he written? <laughs> Nikki Six has though, so we could do that. Well, I nearly sent you the other day. I found a T-shirt. Amplified have got a Kiss T-shirt, and it's Gene Simmons, the Devil Face, and the. I've got it. Do you want to see it? With the Diamante red tongue. Yeah. Oh, <gasps> Caroline. <laughs> Did I tell you about the time we were in the departure lounge with Gene Simmons in the airport in Charlotte a couple of years ago? Oh, and that's my quite cool. God, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were visiting Jeff's family and we got to the airport and he was sat in the departure lounge. He was going back to LA, I guess, just regularly just sat there. And everyone was trying not to like say, look, it's Gene Simmons. And then eventually this couple went over to him and they were like, <laughs> just like, you're Gene Simmons. He was like, and the flight was delayed and delayed and delayed and they were just sat next to him like and then we got delayed and they announced another delay so he just leans over and he's like i just want to leave so can you look after my stuff and they were like yeah yeah we'll totally yes, look after, Simmons, your stuff. Look after he was your like, stuff just going off yeah so i think he went to the bar or whatever but he just fucked off but then they called the flight like 10 minutes later they were like actually no delay we're boarding now and everyone got in the plane quickly and we won't up. lose our slot and this poor couple has sat there going like, we're fucking sat here with Gene Simmons and stuff and we're going to miss our flight because Gene Simmons has just nicked off. Um, and I think everyone did actually end up getting on the plane, but we did end up getting delayed again. And it was very likely because we had to hold the plane for Gene, Gene Simmons. Simmons. Well, to be fair, there are a few people who could get a plane held for them and he's one of them. Well, yeah, especially like a little internal flight from Charlotte, Carol uh, North Carolina, South yeah. Carolina, oh, North, North. Um, <laughs> to to LA it was just the look on their faces when he asked them was beautiful and then the look on my faces back. when they announced that we all had to board it was just a like shame the last time I came back from LA I was waiting and it was a business trip so I was in Virgin Upper thank you so much and I was waiting you know in the separate queue and then you see someone you just know you know the body language when someone famous is around you right and you obviously when they have an escort like if they have an escort they're proper famous yeah right so this bloke comes over and i'm going oh my god like oh my god it's him oh my god right with his wife gets sat at the front of the queue i say nothing i'm like i'm saying nothing this obviously used to like being at the front of the queue businessman went over and he went uh there's a queue and this dude just like the guard the guide guard 
escort turned around and he went, um, I'm just going to escort this guest onto the plane. And then, and then he, the bloke looked and went white, right? And I'm like, yeah, that's right. Sit your ass down. And the guy behind me went, who is it? And I went, uh, Luke Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> when all these men saw when all these men saw that it was mark hamill they were like oh my god mark hamill you can see all these boys who were in the 70s and 80s yeah. just like they're all oh, my and, hero. The and then, then we get on the plane then we get on the plane and what's his face gets on um lord downton lord oh, oh, hugh bonneville, bonneville. Hugh Bon. what was that i'll, I'll tell you in a while <laughs> Yeah, I know, that's Hugh great too. Then Hugh Bonneville gets on with his wife. And I'm like, what is this? It's like some award show finished. And then the piece de resistance, Maisie What's-Her-Face gets on from Game of Thrones. Now, I did not watch Game of Thrones. But at one point, I thought every man in, first, in the upper class thing was going to lose their mind. They had Game of Thrones here and Luke Skywalker here. Literally. So when we landed, I'm going, when we were about to take off, I'm like, uh, just so everybody knows, I'm literally on a flight that's a teenage boy's wet dream. <laughs> Oh, Mark I would like Hamill. to meet Mark Hamill. I've heard he's lovely. I've he's heard. very polite. He's quite old and stiff, though. He looks, I mean, they do good work in the films because he is not, he's not like ambidextrous and sort of like agile. He looked quite old and if he was like, like almost in pain, oh. but he was very polite. Oh. And the odd, the, uh, one of the stewardesses went over and she was just like, can I get you anything? And he's like, no, we're fine. Thank you. And blah, 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 blah. Anyway. <laughs> One of my many oh, stories. So my book would have to be. Honest. Sorry, M. How did we get onto planes when you were talking I know, about? And I thought. Simmons? I thought she was going to tell us a story about meeting celebrities at LAX, but she's not. Tell us about. I was going to tell that story. But I thought we'll only then answer a few questions, but I will tell that story in a second. So it'd be Arnold Schwarzenegger's book. My podcast will also be Joe Rogan because the variety of guests is amazing. And we've actually had a couple of the same people on our shows recently, which I think means that we're... Oh, excuse you, you're literally the same. Yep. And my beauty item, honestly, it'd be tweezers or, an, or a long life battery epilogue. But surely, but surely that like is a standard. I, I would have to have tweezers or a razor. Yeah, I would ha it's just, it would have to be hair and <laughs> Otherwise they'd come and like, find me on the island and I have a beard. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We'd need to ascertain what's in our desert island kit that you have before you add in, and quite I mean, frankly, we're making up these rules ourselves. So, I mean, yeah. Too old yeah, yeah, and a product. Yeah, but I'm going to tell my airport story now because uh, come, come on, Em. Eighteen months ago, ago I flew out to LA to stay with Lindsay for a week as a birthday present to her. Was that eighteen months ago already? It was Christmas. Yeah, not last two years before. Wow, I know it's ridiculous. Right. She's moved house since then. I've moved house since then. Like. Tons has got married, tons has happened. So um, I had used all my points because I had loads of points saved up because I never travel. And apart from all the work stuff, pre. And so I upgraded myself. But on the flight out, I think I was club, not business class, but like the thing between economy yeah. and business class. And on the way back, I was business class. So on the way out, I am up front of that sort of weird section and I get to the carousel thing, like I'm the third person there. And the only other person that I can see as I come around the corner to carousel one is this guy who couldn't have looked any more like Jude Law trying not to look like Jude Law. Oh he was just Jude Law. Like not even, it was just. Was it really him or was it someone who looked like him? No, it was him, but it was like, come I mean, it just looked like so like Jude Law. Like there was no attempt to be like, incognito. It peaked Jude I, saw Law. At, I saw him at Christmas time in Liberty. I'm sorry, but I would. Oh, beautiful. A hundred percent. He is beautiful. On the yeah. carousel, no questions asked. I would have, I would have. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, um, we were coming, Alex and I were going into Liberty and he was coming out, right? He had the beanie on. Did you at least lick him? Did you lick him? He was with his daughter. It was very inappropriate. Oh, right? Okay, no, that's fair. He was, that's fair. He was with his daughter. So I'm going to Alex, who's you know, like this height next. I'm going, all right. Let's face, it. Let's face No, let's face it. I have a wider bird's eye view. And I'm going, Jude Law, Jude Law, Jude Law, Jude Law, Jude Law, Jude Law, Jude Law. Right? And she goes, oh my God. And as we walked past, we were in straight in the corner door and we went straight into the car department. And she mm. Oh, he's quite short, isn't he? And I went, well, doesn't matter when you're in bed, does it, love? In the middle of liberty. And that we were like guffawing the whole way through. Then we get through to the actual beauty department. 
And I went, please tell me you all saw Jude Law. And of course, everyone goes, where is he? Where is he? He was gorgeous. And I'm not easily, yeah. aware, you know. Beautiful man. But, so there I am at the carousel. But also... I thought you'd finish your story. I'm so sorry. I'm shutting up right now. There's a but. There's a but. In my cabin section, there was this guy who I saw him at the gate. Also, oh my God, Jacqueline Bisset. Jack was on my flight. How random. I know. So in my section, there was this guy who was so beautiful and so tall and so just like, ah, oh, like <laughs> genetic. The my <laughs> body is just going, this is the kind of person you should reproduce with. This is like a perfect specimen of a human man. And I just kept staring at him the whole time. And I saw him at the carousel and him Subtly. and he like, hmm? Subtly. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, like, as I'm applying my drunk elephant skincare regimen like during the flight but anyway he um he sort of stood quite close to Jude Law and he was like and he I think he was trying to do that kind of both really both handsome both handsome both know it yeah. <laughs> both, both really really good but looking I remembered that guy's face so that when I saw him on an advert on tv for I think it was brawn hair shaver thingy I was like and I actually sent it to the PR and said could you just tell me what this guy's name is because I just needed to know. But then the other thing about the carousel was Jude Law, who at the time I think was either post-production on Captain Marvel. That sort of I think he was coming there. out to do Captain Marvel. I think he was coming out to do pickups or something because yeah. my friend who works for a film magazine went out to the desert to interview them around that same time. Yes. What's that BTW? Uh, mm -hmm. that BTW? Oh, lucky B. It would be. It would be. I know. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay, so... He would have been in quite good nick because he had fight scenes. It's like there was an element of action. He is in quite good nick, I can confirm. But I can also confirm <laughs> that there was a lady who was, I would say, I, mean, I think when I got to Lindsay's flat, I was like, there was a small Chinese lady who was clearly like the escort, first class escort, no. meaning he was getting his bags off the carousel. I'm like, he oh. was letting her do that. <laughs> Oh, the shame of it. Come on, dude. dude. Like bags. I know. Oh, no, that would have said, I would have been like, dude, come on. Dude. I'm dude. I'm just say dude it will kill a boner. It will kill a boner. Well, uh, My dude lost I'll that keep it brief. Carry your own bags, dude. Um, Don't make the small lady carry your bags. That's not an attraction. And we know he's got, a, he's got the wind in him. Because when I was in England um, on the iHeart Christmas book tour, I was in England for like a month. So I had a flat in Covent Garden um, that I did not pay for. <laughs> but I was in a flat in Covent Garden. <laughs> And it was opposite um, the theatre. It was opposite yeah, yeah, yeah. one of the theatres. And it was down, the, it was, you know where Jay Sheiky is? So it was on that street. So I had, but it was a walk up and it was like, I was on the top floor. But he was in a play, he was in the play at the theatre and I would regularly arrive home to the flat at the same time he would arrive for the play. Ooh. And it took me a couple of minutes. I'd be like, <laughs> he always had the newsboy cap on. He, he was in his newsboy cap period. But the awkward thing was he would walk up the stairs of the theatre to his dressing room while I would walk up the stairs to my flat. And he was quite clearly in much better shape than I was. Uh, because we would meet at the windows as you went up the stairs. And it got to the point where I'm like, you've got to improve your cardiovascular fitness to see more of Jude Law because he is moving up the stairs a lot faster than you that. are and it's embarrassing. Yeah, it, I was much fitter when I left. But it got to that really awkward point where we were in weird nodding terms of like, well, guess we're going up the stairs. So he's the he's nodding at you and you're like, oh, you don't know how unsafe you I are. I know, I just kept waiting for the note to come through the door that was like, here's tickets to the play, come and meet me and we'll hang out. But instead it was like, there's that girl again, looking at me through the window again. And out of like, breath, trying to run up the stairs. Knackered, literally would stand in front of my door, like bracing myself against the door, be like. <gasps> <gasps> it, was, it was not my best work. But he's so handsome, he's so handsome. It's a bone structure of an actual god. Let's just be really honest. Yeah, it's beautiful. So, right, here's a good question. I really like this one. Um, I've lost it. Where is it? <laughs> Sorry. No, genuinely, it was here. It was like, where was, what's a product that you wish had never become a thing? Hang on. Oh, how long oh, That is got? a good one. Hang on a minute. Honestly, I'm now living. That is a real question. That does exist. I remember putting it into the document. Oh, a product all three of you wish had never become a thing. Um, I just, I really hate sheet masks. And I know it's masks, controversial. Wipes, anything with glitter in it. Anything yeah. with a unicorn. Anything that infantilizes women. I mean, pick one. 
I just, I feel like the sheet mask pressure is like weird and that people are like, sheet mask, sheet mask, sheet mask. But like, I hate the feel of them. They're slimy on my face. I draw, I, I'm not a mask person really anyway. Right. No. Um, but sheet masks are just massively wasteful and stupid and massively overpriced. Like massively overpriced. overpriced. Yeah, and like maybe three out. of them. Yeah, like maybe three of them have ever done anything for my face that I've seen it. Um, and I just I do feel like it's a hype product that preys on uh, trying to convince people it'll do something that it won't that they could just get from real skincare. So I think they're exploitative as well as shit. I hated the one that looks like that looked like pounders. So it's like, oh, look at me on social media with a face mask on. <laughs> oh, look at me, I'm seven. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, I didn't really like the sale craze either. No. Or the centre one. Gross. Do you know how much or grief I got? when I said I wasn't into snails and skincare and I still have people saying I'm racist against people who live in Korea and places like that because I don't like snail products. I'm like, that's a stretch. But that doesn't define the Korean I mean, market. No. And like you do, you protect your culture, enjoy your culture, but I'm, I'm not going to put snails on my face for my personal preference. In the same way, if I would I not let the snail to just be the snail. Face, you know? When they said, oh, that penis facial, I'm like, you lot need mental help. I'm sorry. Absolutely not. Get a grip of yourselves. That's like pole dancing for fitness. That's like a room of guys. <laughs> I can't believe they did it. <laughs> yeah. It's, we get this, um, there's a wrestling hashtag that goes around very regularly who are fine women who watch wrestling. And they just basically, a dude in wrestle Twitter, I'm a, I post a wrestling podcast, I'm wearing a Steve Austin t-shirt. Um, but they convinced they were like let's show each other all the fine women that watch wrestling so they just got all these women to post really hot photos of themselves while all the boys just fapped off over them in their basement and like this isn't us being empowering empowering ladies like we know we don't we don't need to post hot selfies to get validation you know you're hot and awesome and you watch wrestling this is very weird uh, and it was just like then overtaken by gross dudes posting comments and like that's not why it happened that's not why we were doing it Ugh. And if you want to pole dance, go crazy. But like, stop it. Uh, I don't. Boys are gonna look at it. Boys are gonna look at it. Which is how I feel about it. There is a, a pole dancer called. I think she's called Janine Butterfly, or something like this. Her pole dancing is insane. Because Makes you feel it, depressed about yourself and your life choices. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's she is so strong and so powerful, and it's so beautiful. She did an amazing routine. I will find it and send it to you. And she did this routine to um, Florence and the Machine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it will make you just go, oh my God, how on earth did she do that? She's literally on the pole and she looks like she's walking upstairs. She's so strong. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Next time you're both in LA, I can't wait to see Caroline's face. I'm going to take you both to Jumbo's Clown Room, which is the bikini bar where Courtney Love used to work. And uh, it has dancers, pole dancers. No, it's down to bikinis. It's not naked strip club. Um, but they all dance to like Depeche Mode and The Cure and it's all shapes and sizes. Everyone's got tattoos or like very individual, very independent. It's a woman runs it or it was at least the last time I went there. Um, and it's it's pretty amazing. The dancing is incredible. It's a dirty hole in a wall dive in Hollywood. Oh, I love that. But it's, like, iconic. Dirty holes in the wall. Yeah. Woman. Um, but the dancing I've seen there is like what they're capable of doing with their bodies is just like beyond me and it's never male gaze it's always these are women putting together their routines for themselves um and to just God, it's so impressive that. and so incredible God, i love that if yeah. i could do proper pole dancing like those because it would have to be angry music my pole dancing song is 100 percent primal scream by um motley crew oh really there you go listen to it and then imagine well, we'll have a word and see if we can get you up on stage when you come out to jumbos I don't have the upper body strength. I just feel no. like I'm I just have to hold on to it and kind of slide down it. Like I might show you a tip. <laughs> <laughs> it's all core. They tell me it's all core. The well, girls I at Jumbo, I it. haven't been for ages. Me and Terry went once and had a grand old time. Uh, but yeah, they, they tell me it's all core. You just got to cling on for dear life and hope that your midriff like holds you upright. That's how it works. Good to know. <laughs> I'll bet that's mine next time I'm trying to get last. I, I do have a Courtney Love story. Oh, we have to hear the Courtney Ooh. Love story. Oh, it literally is that. Uh, it was at the L Style Awards a few years ago. And the I what awards? L Style Awards. Remember when they used to be a thing? And I was on a table 
And it was kind of a press table, so it's a mismatch of people who didn't really know each other, but they were there just looking, going, oh, isn't Rosie Huntington might be really pretty? And everyone was, to be fair. Oh, she's stunning. I've seen her naked. Also Miranda Kerr, <laughs> carry on. You know that friend who just bests every story <laughs> you might possibly have? I saw Jude Law at the airport. I saw him in Liberty. I'm shutting up right now. <laughs> um, yeah, and she came running over to the table, lifted up the tablecloth, but oh, I was say something else. But in the in the process of doing that, lifted up the skirt I was wearing and went, "Is my handbag under there?" And I was like, "No, <laughs> no." It was just a really embarrassing, weird moment. And Would I just you like to see my vulva. The best way to possibly meet Courtney Love, <laughs> just like by her lifting up. She's a, she's a funny old one, isn't she? Yes. Um, I feel like we should go back to books because I feel like we've done beauty. We probably should. We've covered pretty much everything from Gene Simmons to Fanny's yes. to penises. So. Oh, so we've gone vulva now. We've gone, we've, we've we've gone to vulva. So. Frontal <laughs> vulva. So with the remainder of the time that we have together, so uh, Caroline. Yes, skin mate. Skincare. Yes, mate. quite well. Has done quite well, mate, yeah. But you, but you can't get my prescription have right. already said it's a one-time deal. Yeah. So you're not going to do what Motley Crue did, which is say, this is the last time we're ever touring, so we go. Yeah, and then... And then they go, do you know how many times I've been to the Guns N' Roses Once in This Lifetime tour? <laughs> I've seen them three times on that tour. Like, change the title, lads. Change the title. Oh, furious. Um, you're not going to do that, are you? Like, this is one and done. Yeah, they've said, because we're doing a... Um, I don't know if I can tell you, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Tough shit. It's my book. We're doing a special limited edition for Crimbo. Wait, how is it going to be limited edition? I can't tell you. I, I cannot tell you. <laughs> it's going to be what? Is it going to be bedazzled? No. No, it's going to have a vulva Just on the front. bathed in glitter. Glitter and snail mucus. Um, That's all it's going to be. And I can make tweaks. And I'm already in the frame of mind of, like I said to them, um, like, I, I knew certain um, parts of the book would always have to be updated. And I already want to update a couple of parts. And it's not that it's bad science. It's just that I like to like, be completely relevant. And they were like, well, if they want to change anything, you've got time if you give it to us before Thursday. And I'm like, oh, I can change things in it already. So it'll be additions. There'll definitely be additions. But what, I mean, if you, you can't write a book called The Ultimate No-Nonsense Guide. So what do you write after that? Yeah, you know? Less ultimate, slightly nonsense -y guide. Good. It's, yeah, it doesn't really work, does it? I mean, I can't. I, I don't, if I think of, you know, if I could think of something to, I don't know, I, I'm very, like, I don't know how you did 16. I do not know how. She's on the next well, because they're all made up. That's how, <laughs> like, none of them are based in real life or fact like yours is. Um, so basically, I'm just a well-paid liar. That's, that's ultimately what I do for a living. Fair uh, play. I would get that yeah. card, those cards made up. But so let's talk about your book, In Case You Missed It, which is the latest one, which revolves around Roz, who is our heroine, our protagonist, who I'm livid with you and you know this. I know, I'm sorry. I, I feel terrible. Things, and I really miss it still. I really like your books very much. They're very Boston. I like the characters. I give a shit about the characters. I feel like if I was in their world, they'd give a shit about me. And so, yeah, more please, Lindsay. Are you writing the next one? Okay. I am, I'm writing right now, not right now, obviously I'm doing this quite clearly, um, but I am halfway through the first draft of my next adult book, which will be out next year. Now, viewers, she said adult, because obviously I've said 16 books, which refers to just the adult <laughs> ones, but there are also how many, um, they're not YA, what are they? I don't know the term. The middle grade, we would call them in America. I don't know technically what we would call them in England, they're just for kids the children's books for sort of seven plus but my four-year-old uh friend that sounds weird my, my friend penny is four uh and she loves them uh but she has them read to her but you could read them yourself from seven and how many of those are there there's three cinders and sparks at the moment so uh, it's a series so the other lot. yeah you're yeah. a machine kelp you're a machine no better to do. Note better you to do. You literally finish one, <laughs> deliver it, and then start another one, don't you? Yeah, it's not super healthy, um, but it's also my job, and I'm for Doncaster, so I have to be working all the time. Um, I don't know anything else. I, I get that, like the northern thing of 
you know, work, 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 work. It's when people say things like, oh, are we going to, are we going to go, like when they say, no, are we going on holiday? I'm like, why, are we finished? <laughs> I, know, I know, it's really hard. Do Even I when I'm away, you? like I'm not someone that can switch off. Like I'm, I'm still engaged you in some ways. Do. Like Caroline hmm? doesn't even know what day of the week it is usually because she doesn't observe the fundamental just structure yeah. of a weekend. No, well, because you, I think that's a self-employed thing too. Like you can't, because if well, you have a deadline, it doesn't matter if it's Christmas or your birthday or Saturday or someone's christening or someone else's part. You know, like I've missed all kinds of stuff because uh, I was on a deadline. Um, and it just, it, and I'm not saying that's a Northern thing, but it was bred into me by my family for sure. Work, that work, it's work, just, work, 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 you work. work until the work is done and the work is never done. Work is never so done. <laughs> yeah, I don't really, I left uni and started my job the next Monday. Like it's just how it was always in me. Like I've just always been trying to like get to the next thing, do the next thing. One day I'll like have a minute, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know when it will be. <laughs> No, I know. Friends, and I like to think I'm like this too is that you sort of you have a load of tasks on your plate you have all the stuff that you've got to do and you're both very much like this and you sort of spend a lot of time getting getting your head around all of that so you feel like you're in control of it so there's some room and then the second there's some room you add something else to the pile and then it's the, yeah. next, it's the next phase over again now we are drawing to a close but there is one question from somebody and I think this whoever asked this I think we need to shower this person with Lindsay Kelp grade love, with Caroline Hiron's branded positivity and encouragement. Because the question that was actually asked was, what can I do if I'm not beautiful at all? Oh. I and know. Oh, no. Oh, no. That is impossible. Yeah. Yeah. It's I what? mean, that's the first point to say that is um, you definitely are. Uh, and even if you don't feel like it it was a question that I got through on Instagram for us to answer um, and it made me really really sad and I had a short cry because and that was the, the question was longer and more involved I shortened it a little bit so that we could address it but um, I want that person hopefully they're watching either now or later when we repost this to know that whatever has made you feel like that because it's not true so no. something has made you feel like this and I hope that you will believe us because you've believed someone else when they've told you something that's very wrong. So I hope you will believe us when we tell you something that's very true, which is it is not possible uh, that you are not beautiful. You don't have to be amazing at makeup. You don't have to be putting on false lashes and contour and doing wacky stuff to your hair and taking incredible selfies. Like that, That's not what makes somebody beautiful. So absolutely not. You absolutely are. You just have to believe it. That's what you did have, have that to person's do. person's name or did it come in anonymously? It was, it was a pseudonym on an Instagram post. But. Mm -hmm. It just is um, impossible. And I think one thing, one of the reasons why I wanted to end on it is because as mates, um, I know that I can call either of you at any time. And I hope you know that the same is true for me. And if I was feeling in that space, I, you are two of the people, the first people that I would call. And so I wanted, and I can see so much love in the chat from people just saying, it's nonsense, of course you're beautiful, you're amazing. Um, reframe it and say that I am me, therefore I am beautiful. Um, and I know that that's what you guys do for not just me, use your mate and your other friends, but also for your followers, readers and viewers as well. So, yes. She's a, she's a well, good egg. I had to get a pep talk from Guns this morning because I woke up on the wrong side of the bed and was being a grumpy baby. Uh, and I got, I got gunsed and it was appropriate. Oh, oh, oh. And I felt better for it. I felt better for it. Um, I am also going to mention now, before I forget, because I've <laughs> forgotten for the full hour, everyone watching this right now um, that's watching it live, sorry if you're watching it on replay, uh, but everyone watching this live is getting a 20% off code for Elemis. Uh, that you will receive on email tomorrow. So you will get a code tomorrow that will give you 20% off everything on Elemis's website. And we're going to pull one name from the chat. Just pick someone at random. Who wants to pick? I'm going to make Guns pick. Pick some, one name at random and they're going to get a goodie bag with Elemis products and oh, uh, Hiram's mug, crazy. I believe. No, uh, we had a mug. Right. I just saw uh, oh, no, no, no. Oh, <laughs> them all. Me! I can't see. I, it's moving just so quickly. Just scroll up and... <laughs> hang on, I'm going to have to go to the, the participants and look at the names. I can't. Oh, no, I can. Hang on. Right. No. <laughs> she can't, but she can. But she will. 
<laughs> but what about rage against the mapine? There are so many, um, there are so many Laura's. I saw the name Laura, I feel like that's really unfair, but um, Caroline, you, you choose. Oh, I, I would just give it to Rage Against the Mapine. Yeah. Let's give it to Rage Against the Mapine. Oh, from, so Rage Kel against the Mapine. from Kelly. Okay. Who is Kelly, she? right? Kelly something. So message us, Kelly. If you email Kelly Smith, if you email the Lindsay Kelk at harpercollins.co.uk uh, email address that you registered with, they will get your address from you and send you a goodie bag uh, for, for your excellent punning. For your no excellent penises pun work. included. No, <laughs> zero penises, oh, no penis facials, no pictures of penises. Um, but uh, yeah, thank you for your excellent stellar contribution to this chat. We appreciate it. But everyone's getting the 20% off code, so that's nice. Thanks, Elemis. Yeah, um, yeah Thanks, Elemis. Say, this has obviously been uh, brought to you in collaboration with, which maybe I should have mentioned an hour ago. With I feel like this is definitely the kind of chat they wanted their name against. So we should mention it more. I know them well. <laughs> They'll be fine with any peen included. With I, said, <laughs> I was asked what my favourite three Elemis products were, and I said the Pro Collagen Marine Cream, the Milky Bath Soak thing, which the name oh. is not relevant because it's, it's just is it the Frangipani and Manoy. No, 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 not that one. No, no. no. Milk. I didn't milk. Like it. milk. And oh. the Mosley's. Oh. I don't bathe often, but when I do, it's only with Elemis. <laughs> I don't clean my body regularly, but when I do. I'm pretty okay, sure I, that I Elemis Aching Muscle Super Soak was my first Hall of Fame product on the blog, like 10 years ago. Oh, wow. I'm pretty it's sure been around it, forever, hasn't it? I'm pretty sure it was Weird. Aching Muscle Super Soak was my first. Yeah, Elemis was one of the first brands that started uh, working with me when I started blogging. They were one of the very first brands that were like, yeah, okay, cool. We don't really know what this is, but we'll send you stuff and talk to you about stuff and invite you to things. Um, and they have always, always, always uh, supported me with stuff like that and through to today. Um, but if I had to pick three, it would be the collagen, the pro uh, collagen cleansing balm, the dynamic resurfacing pads, because my face loves a lactic, a nice gentle lactic acid. Mm -hmm. And, um, oh God, uh, uh, it's there so hard to choose products. one. There's no, I know there's so many and it's really stressing me out now off the top of my head. I like the new balm as well, the new glowing balm. No, it's the glowing priming moisturizer that just came out. That's really nice. The glowing moisturizer, which I'm wearing now and I genuinely think is like, if I didn't like Future Dew, because it was way too oily for my skin. Uh, but the glowing priming moisturizer is right on the money for a soft focus glow. Ooh, <laughs> I do. It was my highlight of the week on full coverage on the last episode. I genuinely, genuinely, like I'm obsessed with it. And it's in a really practical, squeezy, see-through tube. It's not fannying about, it won't break. It's just so straightforward and basic it's and good. It's not fannying about. It's not funny and about. That's what they should put on the website. Elemis is glowing priming moisturizer, not funny and about. We that's for you, Elemis. That's free. We should do this as a series. The not funny about series. With Caroline <laughs> me and Emma. Amazing. About. Um, so I feel like um, uh, thank you for flying with random airways. We <laughs> We are now at the gate and we invite you to disembark and uh, your journey. Your exits are here, here, and here. Who's, who's collecting my bags, Emma? Who's collecting my bags? Oh, I need Lord. someone to get oh, my lady. bags off the... There's a small lady <laughs> running away. <laughs> Imagine! Oh, how embarrassing for him. Wouldn't you just die? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. He should make it up to us by getting all of our bags off the uh, conveyor belt. You can get my bags. It's the only way I can think about it. I'd like to be on his conveyor belt. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> And on that note, uh, firstly, I'm going to say, Caroline, please replace Jim's snack. I will, I will take <laughs> I'm worried snack. about it. Um, and don't forget to take your HRT. Yeah, I worry about that. people. I'll do that now while I'm sitting here, shall I? And, yeah. um, uh, you're, and thank you to the wonderful Emma Guns for hosting. Thank, thank you, you Emma, marvellous, Emma. marvellous. MZ, MZ, uh, and go Guns. subscribe to her podcast immediately. Subscribe to the Emma Gunn Show. I can't even, marvelous. Can even get into the details of you being able to write 16 books as well as the kids' stuff. I mean, come on. Yeah. I mean, I it's been tell you like how much I hated 12 years. It's been a minute. Oh, no, oh. no. You're not, you're not supposed to enjoy it. It's supposed to be like the hair shirt of jobs. It's oh, the hair God. shirt of creativity. God, because it was. <laughs> I mean, it was just... 
I feel like Caroline's going to stage an intervention and just come over to go and go to LA and go, Lindsay, what are you thinking? What just were stop. you just thinking? Stop. I mean, when they were like, and I felt really bad because when they were, you know, they were like, you're number one. And I was like, oh, okay, great. I wasn't trying to be like negative. I just, <laughs> I didn't grow up wanting to be an author. So when they say you're number one on the Sunday Times bestsellers list, I'm like, that's a big deal, isn't it? And they were like, it's kind of a big Byron's, deal. pretty big. Byron's. Deal. And then they were like, uh, you're number two this week because deliciously Ella released a cookbook. I'm like, that bitch. <laughs> And then, oh yeah now she's your nemesis forever yeah and then last that's, week that's someone the else another mummy cookbook came out and i was like these mums and their cookbooks need to sod off my section how rude but yeah they're like but you topple the pinch of, of nom so that's all that matters i know and they're like your sales of this and this i'm like oh that's amazing thanks you know it's really great but I, and i would go people do this for fun like you do this as a career my god it's such hard work so i take my hat off for you mate Cheers. <laughs> I'm, I'm just like, bow down. Bow down. You're too kind. You're too kind. Uh, Caroline's going to have dinner now. We know. She's going to... Well, I'm no, I texted Jim and said, oh, we're overrunning. And he went, that's all right. I'll bin this lot and I'll make a fresh lot. Thanks, mister. Oh, good nice. lad. Uh, Lindsay, what are you doing now? I am going to write a book. Um, and then this afternoon, I'm actually doing not one out for full coverage. Soon. Yeah, going to write a book. But I'm interviewing... This would be interesting to the both of you and very not probably to most people listening, but you'll hear this on the next episode of Full Coverage. I'm interviewing the Beauty uh, Incubator Group that funded The Way and Patrick Tarr and a bunch of other brands. Because um, I want to know what it means to be a Beauty Incubator Group and how you make choices. And I'll message when I met you. Patrick Tarr, I wouldn't give him a million dollars to make a brand. You were with me, weren't you? Do you remember? Yes, I was. And his products are great. Oh, I yeah. don't like them. Too greasy, mm -hmm. too three. Oh, I really love the lipstick and the um, new cream blush power uh, duo. I touched his face and he looked like he was going to have a stroke, didn't he? I've never seen a man be so quick. <laughs> it's like literally that. what she did. Oh, oh, lovely skin! And he was like, my entire life. And I looked at Lindsay and she she, I was like, um, don't worry, I do do it for a living, honestly. And this was at a La Mer event. The mortification. <laughs> He hadn't been informed. He hadn't had a... He didn't uh, know about us. It wasn't his fault. Digest, he, hadn't, he hadn't been yeah. prepped. Bless him. He's not on the interview today. He is not he on the like, interview today. <laughs> he does sell a fan as part of his brand. But the newest range of launches, the newest uh, launches, there's matte lipsticks that are absolutely stunningly beautiful. And there's a cream powder blush duo that's really gorgeous. And the Bring cream has a little lid over it. Off. It doesn't go... I don't... I hope not. Um, the the makeup's really lovely. The last launch is really really nice. Um, I'll take your so, word for it, Kelk. Yeah. I just I'm I'm traumatized. It's not out in the UK yet. But, I have um, I, I felt. Soon. Oh, he did not enjoy us. He did not enjoy <laughs> he us at not. all. We enjoyed him no. until he didn't. <laughs> he enjoys himself and Gigi Hadid, and that was it. that was all I got from that conversation that we had with him. Gigi. I mean, um, talk about name drop. I'm like, all right, mate. Do you want a shovel to pick up all those names you're dropping? And then you told him to stop using Cetaphil on her. And it was, it was I really so did go quite hard, didn't I, thinking about it. I forgot about all that. And it was daytime. I hadn't even been drinking. Guys. Why are you putting Cetaphil on these people? Oh, of course I did. Of course I did. I'll tell anyone. Why would you do that? It's I fine. Don't I was I'll against him. I don't understand. I thought you had that. He turned against me for living on the wrong side of LA. I lived in the wrong part of LA. So he didn't, he didn't want to talk to me. <laughs> but it's fine. I'm so glad for everyone that stayed around to hear this. Special like hey, they're loving it. This is the best part. <laughs> this is honestly, this is this is genuinely what would have happened if we'd been at dinner at Dirty Bones. Yeah, um, that's right? fair. Exact. I would have been like this a lot of the time, going maybe with some tequila, and I don't even drink. <sighs> you know what? I would I would love a margarita right now. Hey, a margarita. Me a bottle of Reposado, uh, and there's a little bit left. And I've got nice. Some. How very dare she? If she sent it to you, you wouldn't drink it. You would say, Guns, I've got this. Do you want it? No, tequila, I might be tempted. But she talks about. Well, maybe we should all margarita toast from our corners of, of where Cheers. we are. Yeah. <laughs> no, like, it's not the same, but. It's been special. Oh. It's been awesome. Thank you to everybody who has tuned in, who has joined to get to see Caroline and Lindsay two incredible authors whose books are well worth your time and your money and obviously uh caroline's 
lives you should tune into. They are usually at 5 p.m. BST every day, every weekday. Lindsay obviously has full coverage and she's just such a recording a new episode later on this afternoon. Basically, follow them on Instagram. Make sure you uh, are engaged with everything that you do because it will be as awesome as this. Just engage. Just engage, yeah. people. Just like engage. you say, women in labour. Engage, engage with us. Engage with us. Engage. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys we really have to go uh, but this was amazing thank you to both of you and thanks Bye. to everyone watching uh, we'll see you again soon Bye.